In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare a wet mount slide of stained onion epidermal cells. Here's my microscope slide. I want to have that out and ready. I can obtain my specimen from one layer of onion bulb. If I look at this layer, one side is kind of rough and matte, and the other side is smooth and shiny. I need to break my onion layer towards the shiny side and then very gently peel the two pieces apart. There's a thin transparent layer of cells holding these two pieces of the onion layer together. That's the layer of epidermal cells that I'm looking for for my specimen. Now I need to obtain a piece of that onion epidermis to place on my slide. I can do that by tearing it off with a pair of tweezers. This is a very delicate, thin layer of cells and they'll fold over on themselves. Uh, so when you place that onto the slide, once you get it off your tweezers, you're going to need to spread it out a little bit. The little piece of onion epidermis can easily get all wadded up and that makes it very difficult to see the cells. While filming in the lab, I forgot to include an easier alternate technique for getting that onion skin onto the slide, so I'm going to show it to you here in my dining room with my two helpers. The best way to get a large, flat sheet of these onion epidermal cells is to peel that layer of onion skin off directly onto the slide. It's very thin. It'll wrap right around the slide, just like saran wrap. So apparently I've lost my helpers because onions are way too stinky. So we might as well head back to the lab. For this wet mount, I'm just going to use iodine. This will provide the wet part of the wet mount and it will also stain the cells and make them easier to see. Now I'm going to obtain a cover slip, a clear square that I'm going to place on top of my specimen on the slide. The best way to apply that cover slip is to hold it at a right angle to the slide at one side of your specimen and then let it drop, let it fall. As it falls, it will push the air out and you'll have fewer air bubbles this way. Here's my finished, prepared specimen. Here's a closer look at the application of that cover slip. Again, I hold it at a right angle to the slide. I let it drop. That pushes the air out. Sometimes I'll give it a little tap. And now I'm all set. I'm now going to examine my specimen using the 4X objective lens that will magnify the specimen 40 times actual size. Here's my first look microscopically at the onion epidermal cells magnified 40 times. These cells look kind of like misshapen bricks, a whole bunch of them. The compound microscope is par focal. What that means is once I get my specimen in focus at one power, in this case the scanning power, I can switch to the next higher objective, the low power in this case, and my specimen will still pretty much be in focus. I'll only have to adjust the focus a little bit to get it crisp. Here are my onion epidermal cells magnified 100 times actual size. So this is a closer look at that specimen. We just looked at under 40 total magnification, the specimen that did not stain so well. 
We stain the specimen to increase the contrast, to make it more visible. And since the stain wasn't taken up that well, there are other ways to improve the contrast of our specimen. When viewing this specimen and taking this picture, I adjusted the light level. I turned it way down, and that helped me see the cells much more distinctly and clearly. Here's just a reminder of the different ways you can adjust the light level shining up through your specimen. The first way is to use the dimmer dial on the base of your scope. That dial will make the light shining up from the base brighter or dimmer. You can also adjust the amount of light shining up through your specimen by opening or closing the iris diaphragm that's directly beneath the stage. It looks and feels like a camera lens. You twist it and you can let more or less light through the stage. Once the specimen is clearly in focus at low power, that yellow banded lens, I can switch the objective to the high dry power. That's the blue banded lens and it will magnify my specimen a total of 400 times actual size. Here are a couple examples of onion epidermal cells viewed at 400 times actual size through that high dry lens. These samples have stained a little better than the ones I showed you previously. I can see the thick cell walls and these elongated cells. In this picture, I can see a cell nucleus in the second cell below the pointer. More seriously nerdy, amazing free stuff at scienceprofonline.com. Go there.